to Johnny has, has limped a couple of times, but he hasn't made a couple of he hasn't made many aggressive plays. So we're expecting him to have at least like eight or ace queen. And this is kind of a smallish raise, so Mess is usually gonna call. Except with his very strong hands that he would forbet. Okay, this is kind of a weird check, so we're expecting him to mainly C bet. And for sure, if he is tens plus, he's gonna be betting this flop. So the fact that he checks tells us one of two things. Maybe he has a monster, which in this case would pretty much just be nines. Or he has ace, queen, ace, king, and is not c betting because he's missed. So that's definitely the more likely option. Uh, particularly from a hand combo standpoint, there are three hand combinations of pocket nines, whereas there are many more for ace, king, ace, queen, you know, 16 for each of those. So those are far and away the more likely. But regardless, you would expect him to bet this ace. <laughs> okay, if he does have a set of nines, he's got to bet, you know, to get value at some point. And if he has an ace, he's going to be betting now. And master raises. So when a guy three bets you preflop, he's betting an ace, you raise him, that shows a lot of strength. So we're expecting that master nasty, you know, at least has an ace. So this is very much what we're expecting. Johnny has the ace, which is consistent a strong ace with his preflop three bet, checking the flop and betting the ace, and Mass and Nasty is willing to go with it. So that indicates also that he is an ace. And if you're Mass and Nasty, you, you shouldn't, um, I would have raised to, to 150 pre, and then unless the guy literally min raises, I'm generally going to fold ace queen offsuit to any kind of sizable three bet. Tight guy raises under the gun. We're going to be re-raising him with a very tight range and really no wider than jacks and ace king. And even jacks and ace king are going to be threat about. We're not really uh, too threat about the situation until we have kings plus. Gladiator seems pretty loose. He could be on a fairly wide range compared to many players who are making this shove. In particular, most aces are pairs. So I would call him with roughly sixes and ace-ten here. Because generally when he shoves, we shove as well. And these guys, Johnny is almost certainly not trapping, limping behind. A middle position, open limp is very unlikely to be a trap. So we'd be getting it heads up with a good amount of overlay. So roughly sixes and ace-ten I would call this with. Maybe even a bit wider. And pocket calls, which indicates that he probably has, you know, not, not a super weak hand that, that he limped with. So he could have like sixes or sevens here, ace jack, ace queen, maybe even like king queen suited. Uh, that's definitely on the weaker end of what I would have expected because he hasn't been super active. You know, I would have thought facing a shove he would fold the queen jack offsuit. So, uh, but that's good to see that. He's got some gamble on him. Super flash shoving 10 blinds here. Expecting him to have about 7s, you know, ace jack roughly. Maybe a bit wider. Hands that I would raise here would be 5s or 6s, ace 10, as well as the strong Broadway hands. Queen Jack suited, uh, King Queen offsuit, and I would make it 250 with any of those hands, with the plan of calling Mesa nasty regardless of what I held if he shoved. And with one of these guys, it would depend on their stats and, and the exact holding. Like eight or ace queen, I pretty much wouldn't get away from. Uh, with a hand like sevens, it would depend on their stats. So if they were pretty laggy or seemed reckless, I would definitely go with it. But they're kind of tight and unremarkable players that tend to fold. So pretty read base there. 4x is generally a decently strong hand. Um, a lot of the time in a spot like this, it's going to be ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king, or pocket sevens, eights, nines. And for Mestin Essie to put in his remaining stack, he's fairly short. 
but he should have, you know, something, <laughs> uh, at least like a suited ace, be kind of a guess. And these are two weaker hands than I would have expected. So for instance, Champs definitely seems to be a looser player than we would have expected given how tight he seems so far. And that 4x usually is an ace off. But I guess he didn't want to give Mass and Nasty any opportunity to stop and go him. So, if he raised like in mid position to 4x, then that read of like 8s, 9s, ace queen, ace king would apply more. On, on the button, I guess it's definitely not too shocking as a wider range. If she champ had a jack, he would almost certainly bet. So we're thinking that he has two overcards, maybe a pair, a pair of eights or something. And Messinesti has previously donked by the flop a lot in these situations, and now he's doing the turn, so we don't necessarily give him too much credit. But it's not such a bad play at the turn, because if he doesn't like a flop of jack 5-7, he's probably not going to love a turn 6 either. And so it's actually a pretty reasonable time to go ahead and fire into a limpot. About 9 blinds here over a limp ride, shove around 6 is an ace 10. Maybe 7 is an ace jack actually. 6 is an ace 10 is maybe a little bit loose. 7 is an ace jack. Looks pretty good. And we're again not giving either of these guys too wide a range. Normally after a limp and a shove, we would give the big blind a pretty somewhat tight range for calling, but since he started off with four blinds before posting, he can have a number of hands. Under the gun, we only have nine blinds, so it's really a shove fold decision. And we're going to shove roughly eights and ace queen there. Superfly on the button for about seven blinds could be on a, a pretty wide range, particularly compared to most of these other players. A reg is going to be shoving much wider in that situation, and I would put him on any pair, any ace, any broadway, most suited connectors, any suited king, mid suited queens. So definitely a really wide range. And as a result, it's kind of interesting to think how wide would we call him if he's shoving that wide? And we could almost call him with, with any ace, any pair. So I'm pulling it up in Wizard, and what's interesting about a hand like this is how incredibly sensitive it is to the pusher's shoving range. And it's a little bit tough to say how wide he's going to be shoving, in part because Wizard, of course, uses the SC hand rankings, and it's very unlikely. He's not going to be shoving King 2 off, most likely, but he is going to be shoving a ton of these suited connector hands. So about 40% or so seems right. And in that case, any ace and any pair are calls. And it's, it's a pretty wide range to be calling somebody shoving 7 blinds button. And a sitting goal compared to a lot of players who are only shoving something like, you know, top side quarter of hands. And with shoving top quarter of hands, or even tighter, then suddenly you have to start folding pairs, aces, you can only call with king-queen suited for the Broadway hands. <coughs> and one thing I'd recommend doing is quizzing yourself on calling ranges versus regs and unknowns. And that's a really good way to, to start getting better. Sitting goes are, are mechanical in some aspects in that you can play pretty tight early, although some regs take that too far, and there are often pretty good default shoving ranges, uh, but calling is where the real art comes into sitting goes, in that if you have very good ranges and you adjust well to regs versus unknowns, and you know how close is the bubble very well, then you can get a nice edge in these games, and so it's important to keep on looking at those. In this hand, Urban's shoving about eight blinds, so we're going to put him on 
something like sixes and ace ten was the range, maybe king queen, queen jack suited, some of those hands as well. And for Johnny to re raise the rest of his stack indicates that he is something he wants to play. You know, it's not if you had a hand like say ace jack and he was sort of randomly gonna call this guy, we would expect him to do just that, the flat call. But the fact that he's re raising, a lot of the time this is gonna be um ace king, pocket tens, something that's pretty strong and you know, for him to, to firmly re raise and ace queen is kind of in that range. So I would definitely the point there being that I definitely give him more credit for having something than if he just flat called. Depending on the player that is, you know, for some like tight players that might be more indicative of a trap, but for a random that's how I would look at it. The queen jack suited for six blinds is definitely a shove. And so here I'm gonna be shoving a range of any ace, any pair, any suited Broadway hand, a queen jack offsuit, you know, most of the offsuit Broadway, so pretty wide range there. We've seen champ open limp in lay position before. Uh, anytime there's nothing mess and nasty completes. <laughs> um, so we can narrow these guys' ranges down once at all. And we're not going to give this any credit. Uh, this is totally this guy's MO of leading into any limp pot. And for Chimp to call, we're thinking that he probably has an ace. You know, he could have some random flush draw like Queen Jack suited. He could have a 10. So the ten suit would limp in pre, like maybe king ten suited. Uh, either those or an ace. And for Mesa to go ahead and follow up on the turn, we're thinking that he isn't just randomly betting. He's got at least something. So certainly an ace or better than he would bet. But maybe a ten. Maybe, you know, a strong a queen king of diamonds type hand. Okay, so sure enough, the cutoff does have an ace, a weaker ace, but an ace nonetheless. And 9-4 of diamonds, he bet out on the flop of the first draw, and then picked up a turn to go with it, a pair to go with it on the turn. <laughs> and hits trips, very nice. Now, when Superfly bets the turn, we're not expecting him to bet just because Johnny has checked behind in the flop. Most regs won't do that, particularly and correctly, in my view, when the reg has limped under the gun. I'm going to give him more credit. So we think he's got something. And in particular, that's going to be 8x, queen x, or possibly a flop like two pair. You know, queen 2 or 2 7 was going to check raise and is now betting out the turn. But at very minimum, 8x. Johnny calls, which is a little bit odd. Now, if he had a queen, we would almost, you know, definitely expect him to bet the flop, a queen or better. So maybe he has 7x or 8x, in particular, like ace-7 suited or ace-8 suited. Would be the hands that kind of make sense there. And Superfly now, we're definitely does not, we do not think has two pair. He doesn't have a hand like queen-2. So we're thinking that most likely he has 8x. Possibly queen x or seven x. I'd say eight x is the most likely, but one of those hands, and not something weaker, not something stronger. And this bet doesn't really make any sense uh, for Johnny. If he had seven x or eight x, then we would expect him to just show down. So maybe he has like king seven suited or king eight suited, or maybe he floated the turn and is like bluffing with ace high. But this bet doesn't make too much sense. And Superfly calls. Okay. So sure enough, he did have um, a hand in that range, but in the stronger end of that range, he had the queen and was playing a more defensive style at the river. And we were right about Johnny at, at the turn, but at the river, I just didn't think that he would go ahead and fire, you know, a big bet with 8x. You'd think he'd just want to show it down. So I don't think he was necessarily thinking about turning this hand into a bluff or betting for value. Um, more likely is just a more recreational player who 
fire down the river without thinking too much about why. Okay, the field has narrowed a little. Now we're at a new dynamic, six-handed. So as we get closer to the bubble, generally guys are going to be calling tighter. Of course, blinds go up some. We have Superflush shoving about 10 blinds here. And compared to a normal range for shoving 10 blinds on the button, most likely he's going to be shoving a little bit wider than that because the big blind is shorter stacked. And so I would still expect him to be shoving any ace or any pair. Pretty much all Broadway hands. Uh, a lot of the suited connectors, so similar to seven blinds on the button, but maybe just slightly tighter. And when the small blind calls, he's definitely showing a, a good deal of strength because he has a full 10 blind stack. He doesn't have to get involved here. And so we're thinking that most likely he has at least sevens or ace jack. He could have a hand like, you know, queen jack suited or something kind of random like that, but my best guess here would be sevens plus an ace jack. And this is slightly wider than I would have thought for for both opponents. Suited king, a low suited king is, is actually fine. It's, you know, reasonable open here. Ace set off for, for ten blinds. You know, he's he's been fairly loose, so I guess he's actually looser than, than I even pegged him for making that call. When the ante comes into play, we're going to be adjusting for it in the way of treating it like the starting pot, I'm sorry, the big blind is two-thirds of the starting pot. So here the starting pot is 450, and we're going to you know, treat that like ante list blinds of 150 and 300. And so this is basically like having four blinds in the small blind, and we're going to open shove any two against most opponents. Certainly 9-6 offsuit, which is far from, you know, a total junk hand. We'll clearly fold now that Gladiator's been raised. Uh, we obviously have our, our read on him now that he's extremely loose. And so I would come over the top of him fairly wide with most aces, pairs, suited broadways. And running full shoves, so now Gladiator is getting fairly close to 2-1. to one. We expect him to call with most hands here, and we expect Fool to have you know, at least a hand like a suited ace or a pair. Suited Broadway hand, and he folds, so he's definitely raising very wide. Superfly is shoving about three blinds in the hijack, and I think he's shoving a little bit tighter than any two cards. So with a hand like 3-2 off, he's going to be folding, but I think he's going to be shoving hands like King 2 off suit, 10-2 uh, suited, so a very wide range. And Massa needs to call him super wide for a couple reasons. One reason is that, like we just said, he's got a super wide range here. But the other reason is with the odds. So we have a starting pawn now of 1,200 plus 150, so like 1,350, 1,400, costs 750 to call. So he's getting between 3 to 2 and 2 to 1. And as a result, uh, you're going to look him up with, with a very wide range, including any ace, any king, any pair, any Broadway hand. So I'm just going to pull this in the wizard. And we can take a look. So now that Superfly is shoved, we're going to put him on a range of, say, Pretty wide here. Maybe something like this. And again, stuff to say, because you could definitely fold, you know, these low officer jacks. But there's no question you're shoving, shoving 7 6 suited. And in which case, we have a profitable call with any pair ace king. Also, any queen even. As well as a ton of these mid connecting suited hands. Threes would have been an easy shove, but even against Gladiators 5x, we're probably just going to muck this here. 
could we call? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. Let's go ahead and take a look. And definitely against most 5Xs, we're going to have a quick fold. But we are getting a decent price here. Let's go ahead and take a look for the sake of completeness. And the question is, how wide does he have to be shoving? And the answer is very wide as we near the bubble.